Hi there, my name is Joshua Harris. I'm head of support at MailParser, and in this video we're going to go over extracting data from email attachments and populating that data into a new Google Sheet. If this is your first time viewing one of our videos, MailParser is an app designed to save businesses time and money by automating their email data handling. At the time of this recording, our Google Sheets integration is one of our most popular webhooks, and for good reason. Once this example setup is completed, emails with Excel attachments will be automatically parsed by our app and immediately populated in your Google spreadsheet. This will be a setup you can easily replicate and use to save your business many man hours in manual data entry, while also having constantly updated data stored in the cloud that you can access at a moment's notice. Right now we are on the home page of my account. This is the first thing you will see when logging into the app. At MailParser, customers tend to send their emails to us through automatic forwarding rules set up on their mail client. We have extensive documentation on setting this up on your Outlook and Gmail and our knowledge base under the Help and Support tab at the top right corner of the app. This is a great place to visit as it covers many specific use cases. For convenience, I have already forwarded an example email with Excel attachment to the inbox I have created, Box 1. If you have multiple formats of Excel files you wish to parse, in most cases you will need to create an additional inbox for each template, as our parsing rules will require the data to be in the same place in each email in order to be uniformly extracted. In my last video, we used parsing rules to extract survey data from the body of the email. In this video, we're going to change things up a bit and show how to extract table data residing in email attachments. I'm going to click on the box one box to access it, and as you can see we land on the statistics tab showing the overall activity of the inbox over the last 30 days to include emails imported, data points parsed, and webhook data points sent outbound to integrations on the web. The emails tab shows the emails we have imported and are storing on our servers. You can click on an email to view the parsed data points, the original email as it was imported, as well as the status of any webhooks that have been sent out. The Parsing Rules tab is where we will be configuring the inbox to extract the data we want. The objective when creating parsing rules is to use filters to isolate one individual data point at a time. If you have repeating line items in a table, we will want to make use of our table data filters to extract multiple rows of data. After clicking on Create a Parsing Rule, we will select Attachment as the data source. We then have to choose what and how we parse from the attachment. Selecting metadata will generate header information about the attachment as well as a download URL. Some customers use this to send their attachments elsewhere to be downloaded, like Google Drive. If either table cells or text data is selected, the app will automatically try to read the attachment based off of the data you want to pull from it. If it doesn't pull data automatically, you can select the file type and select a specific file if you have multiple attachments. Reading our example attachment as XLS data provides clean output which we can see here. Since the parsing rule names will account for the header rows in Google Sheets, we will want to remove the first row here. We can do this by selecting Add Cell Filter, Remove and Select, Set Row Range, and set the filter to skip the first row. The data is organized the way we want to have it parsed. However, all of the data points are being extracted in one rule, which isn't compatible with Google Sheets. Fortunately, our explode rule function makes the setup process completely painless by splitting this parsing rule into eight rules each, extracting a piece of a table. Now that we have extracted the table into a set of parsing rules, we can verify the data is being extracted properly in the emails tab. Since there are five rows of data in each parsing rule, we will eventually populate five rows of data to Google Sheets. Once we know we have extracted the data we want, it's time to connect our Google account and our first sheet. We'll do this by going to Webhook Integrations, Add New Integration, Google Spreadsheet. If you'd like, you can connect multiple Google accounts in their own webhooks, but for most customers, one connected account will suffice. After selecting your account, we will populate your available spreadsheets we can send data to, and will also allow you to select an individual worksheet inside of the spreadsheet. Once we've selected the sheet we want to populate data to, Google Sheets will populate the header rows on it to the integration. If you haven't set up the header rows in Google Sheets, you will want to do this now, and then click the refresh button next to the worksheet. When the header rows are populated, we will finally link each parsing rule to its respective header row. 
After you've linked each header row to a parsing rule, we can save and test the webhook with your most recently parsed email. If you're fast enough, you can watch the rows populate to the sheet one at a time. One limitation of the integration is that we require the header rows to have simple names. A column will not populate if its header has a special character, like a period or a comma. Now that just about wraps up our video. If you have any questions or comments, as always, please feel free to drop us a line at support at mailparser.io. Thanks for your time and have a good day.